Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we are going to be doing some tricks, some tips, some hacks, whatever you want to call it on your thrifted finds because if you are anything like me, you feel the need to rescue these items from the thrift store, sometimes even if they're damaged and broken and stained and maybe just not even your style. So we are gonna take those thrifted finds and give them a new life and rescue them so that way they fit in perfectly into your home. So let's get started on the projects. I found this huge planter at the Goodwill bins and I definitely wanted to pick it up because I don't come across this kind of large planters very often, but unfortunately it had a huge piece broken off, but I'm going to see if I can fix it and rescue it and give it a new life. I have a plan, but first I want to use some Gorilla Glue and some IOD air dry clay and I'm gonna put it into the hole and just kind of get it to the same size as the other side. Next, I'm gonna be using the IOD Roses mode to embellish this planter. When using a mold, you just wanna dust it with some cornstarch first before you put in your IOD air dry clay. That way it easily releases from the mold. The air dry clay molds are perfect to cover up imperfections because they are moldable, they are bendable, so you can mold them around your pieces. And I'm gonna use the bigger flower here, which will be perfect for this, is gonna cover up that whole little section that I want it to cover up. So I'm gonna put this big rose on each side of the planter, that way it'll match. And then I'm gonna take some of the leaves that come on here and some of the other pieces that come on this mold, and I'm just gonna add them wherever I think they would look best. I am loving the way that it is looking so far, but of course it needs to be painted to bring it all together. I really wanted this dusty gray pink color, which of course I don't have, and you don't need every color. All you need is a few colors, and you can use what you have to make the color that you want. So I am taking some gray, some white, and a little bit of red to make the most beautiful color. I also decided to add just one spoonful of baking soda to the paint just to add a little bit of texture. This paint went on so good. I only had to do one coat and a few touch-ups. I use a combination of all different brands. I think I use Fusion Mineral Paint, I use Country Chic Paint, and I also use craft paint so this is a great thing about when you're making something and you have an idea and you know I didn't have the color that I wanted but I just looked through my stash look at what I had and I made it work and sometimes that is when the best projects come out when you just look at what you have and you make it work all right guys what are y'all thinking about this color i absolutely love it it's exactly what i imagined but i want to add some details to my molds so i'm taking just a little bit of white paint and then i'm wiping it off on a paper towel so i have a very dry brush and i'm just going to go over and hit all the details i don't want to do the whole pot I'm just going to be doing the sides with the roses on it. And this will just really bring out the details of the modes that I applied to this piece. So as you can see, modes and clay are the perfect thing to cover up any imperfections you may have or to add those extra special details to your piece. And of course, I will have a link in the description to all the products that I used. I rescued this piece from the Goodwill bins. I did not like the color, but I did like the size of it and I love the small opening at the top. I had originally planned to paint this, but I was told by a subscriber that if you soaked the glass in Dawn dish soap, that the color on the glass would peel right off. So I figured we would try it out. So I soaked it in the sink for about an hour and I, it, 
immediately started to peel off and then I realized I had a bigger razor blade so I went try that and y'all it was coming off really really easy but as the piece started to dry it got a little bit harder so I ended up bringing it to the sink and just doing it in the water and that worked out really well however the issue was whenever they had a seam in the glass it was hard to get the color off also the bottom of the piece was angled so i wasn't able to get my razor blade in there very good and scrape everything off so to me this process was a fail just because i wasn't able to get all of the blue off um, but if you have any tips and tricks that you have tried and worked, please leave a comment below. But for me personally, I would just buy the piece in the clear glass that I like, or I would have just painted the piece like I had originally planned. All right, guys, this is a very easy way to make your thrifted finds fit in your house. Occasionally, I find things that I really like, but then it has a duck or some kind of image on it that I do not like. So the simplest solution is just to turn it around and then the side that you like shows and you don't have to paint it. You don't have to do anything to it. It fits perfectly into your decor. So don't pass up those pieces that have something on it that you don't like. Simply just turn it around. When you are at a thrift store, you may see some pieces that you really like the shape of, but you don't like the color, or you don't like what's on it, or maybe it has some chips on it. This next technique I'm going to show y'all is going to be perfect for pieces like that. I'm going to be mixing baking soda with paint, a half and half mixture. Now I'm using flat interior latex paint, but really any kind of paint you have on hand would work. Chalk paint, craft paint, latex paint, it doesn't matter. You just want to mix it with the baking soda and the more baking soda you put in, the more textured it would be. I especially love painting this on pieces that have raised images like these teapots. I just think it comes out so beautifully. And like I said, this is perfect if you have a piece that has cracks in it or some chips, because once you put that textured paint on it all of those imperfections will disappear it usually takes me two coats of paint on these pieces and then you could uh, seal it with a clear spray you could also go back with a white wax or a dark wax or some dry brushing to bring out even more of the texture if you wanted I have that second teapot and I also had some paint left over from the previous project so I just added some more baking soda to that color and I'm going to paint the second teapot in that beautiful dusty rose color. So if you see something when you're out thrifting that you love but it has some imperfections to it do not let that deter you. You could apply this painted textured technique to it and it will give it a new life. Y'all know that I love rusty, crusty kitchen items, but I also find these kitchen items brand new, very inexpensively at thrift stores and garage sales. So I'm gonna try the toilet bowl cleaner hack and see how much rust I can get out of these brand new kitchen items. I am using toilet bowl cleaner that I purchased from the Dollar Tree. I put my items in a Ziploc bag and I'm going to put the toilet bowl cleaner on them. You could also put it in a bucket as long as you coat it with toilet bowl cleaner. I'm gonna seal them up. I'm gonna make sure they are thoroughly covered in the toilet bowl cleaner and I'm just gonna leave them outside and we are gonna see what happens. So I ended up leaving these outside for a week because we left town and I kind of forgot about them, but you should really see results after 24 hours. But the longer you leave it out, the more rusty it will get. And I absolutely think this works. I love the way these came out. Y'all let me know what y'all think.
I purchased these two canisters from Goodwill and I absolutely loved the botanicals on them and the subject matter and I especially love the covers with the little flowers on the knobs. However, they did have a lot of staining on them and I don't mind a little bit of age on my pottery but I just felt like this canister set had a lot and it was very splotchy so I did a little bit of research and I found that if you soak them in oxyclean it should get the stains out so we're going to go ahead and try that today it's been soaking for about 30 minutes so I'm going to pull it up and see what it's looking like it's looking really good seems like a lot of this staining is coming off Okay, I also put the smaller one in here, so let me check that one. It's looking really good as well. I still see a little bit more staining, so I'm gonna leave it in for a little bit longer and we'll see if everything comes off. This is what it's looking like after soaking for an hour. So it still has some marks on it, pretty much the same marks it had after 30 minutes but it definitely looks a lot better. What do y'all think? Does this look better than what we started off with? I don't, like I said, I don't mind some of the blemishes on it. I like the age that it gives it, but I felt like to begin with, this one just had a lot. So I'm happy with the results of this. I still have the canisters out from the night before and it looks like some of the staining has come back now it doesn't look as bad as when I originally purchased these and like I said I don't mind a little bit of staining so I'm still happy with the results but I definitely want to show you all this that you know it didn't look like it did last night some of the staining did come back and I wanted you all to be aware of that but all in all I think that this worked. Did it get rid of all of it? No. But does it look better? Yes. So y'all let me know what y'all think about it. This bright green horse bookend is definitely not my style. And it also had a crack in it. But you know what is in style? Anything that has to do with horses. And you know what is a classic look? Cement. This is a technique I've done many times before because it looks great on everything. We're gonna take some gray paint and we're gonna take some baking soda and we're gonna mix it together, half baking soda, half paint, and we are going to give this piece a faux cement look. I'm using Fusion Mineral Paint in the color Little Lamb. It has a built-in sealer, so it is perfect for this project. And I'll have a link in the description below if you are interested in that. But really, any kind of gray paint you have on hand will work. Your first coat of paint, you just want to get it on there and let it dry. Then for your second coat of paint, you really want to add that texture. So I like to stipple it on. So first coat of paint, just get it on there, let it dry. Second coat of paint, you're going to go back and add that cement texture by stippling your paint. The paint doesn't really keep well once you add the baking soda to it. So I try to use it all when I mix it up and I had a lot extra. So I decided to take this huge pair that I had thrifted. I knew immediately when I bought it, it would look great with the full cement look. And since this one is so smooth, I went back with two coats of stippling. So first coat, you just wanna get it on there. And the next two coats, I really stippled and added as much of that cement texture as I could to it. Now this next step, is what's really going to give it that full cement look you just want to take some white wax you put it on your entire piece to make sure you get it in all the little details and then you're going to take a paper towel and you are going to wipe it off or dab it off i usually do a combination of wiping and dabbing so once again, this is a great way to take something that you purchase very inexpensively at the thrift store that maybe wasn't the color or the style that you like, or maybe had some imperfections. You can paint it and give it this very classic full cement look that will fit into any style of decor.
Y'all see me use white wax all the time to update my thrift store finds, but I haven't been able to find a white wax that I like. It's either too bright or too yellow. It's just not the perfect white. So I started creating my own. I ordered this clear wax from Amazon and I'll have a link in the description below. And I add three spoonfuls of the white that I like. I am using antique white from Walmart, but any white paint color that you have will work. And then you just want to mix it up very, very good. Make sure you label your container white wax so that way you know. And now you have your own custom made white wax to use for all your projects. You have watched me use white wax on lots of different painted projects, but I want to show you real quick how you can use white wax on its own to transform a piece. So I have all these plaques that you can find very easily at the thrift store and they have a kind of yellow color to them that I do not like. So I'm simply going to just add some white wax to it and that is going to brighten up the entire piece without doing anything else. This is such an easy, inexpensive way to take something that you've thrifted or maybe something that you already have in your home and make it more your style by adding white wax and brightening it up. Now the same way we just took the white wax to brighten up the item, we could take the brown antique wax and put it on something brand new and make it look old. If y'all watch my channel, you know that I use antiquing wax all the time. It just is the perfect color and makes everything look old. And for me, that is exactly what I want. So I'm just gonna put a layer of the antiquing wax on this brand new basket and it's gonna give it an old age look with very minimal work. And of course, I will have a link in the description below to the antiquing wax and all the products that I use in this video. Now I'm going to add this metal basket to this woven basket and it's going to look so cute styled in my home. All right, guys, I really hope that y'all enjoyed today's video. Leave a comment below. Let me know which one you like best. Now, I know we can't rescue everything from the thrift store, but we can certainly try. So I hope this video helped y'all out. Y'all have a wonderful day, and I will see y'all in the next one.